the shield of faith. Let's take a closer look. Ephesians 6 verse 14 to 16 says, Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. The shield of faith. I love it. I even love the way it sounds. The shield of faith. It is so important. You have to put on the shield of faith at all times. Put it on to protect yourself against the devil and also against the world. And it will protect you. Because it is only through faith that you truly know and trust God. That you know that you have already overcome the devil and the world. 1 John 5 verse 4 says, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. This is the difference between you and unbelievers. You as a child of God, you have faith. Unbelievers don't. They don't have faith. So they let this world influence them. They go through this roller coaster of what we call life. The ups and downs, hardships, sometimes good times. So the one day they're like, yes, this is a good day. Oh, no, it's a bad day. Yes, this is a good time. Oh, this is a bad time. They let it influence them. But that is what makes us different because we have faith and we don't let the world influence us. It is through faith that we know that we can overcome the hardships of this world and also the attacks of the devil because we fully trust in God's word. Philippians 4 verse 13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Ask yourself, what is faith? We talk about it all the time. But do you know what faith really is? Hebrews 11, the whole chapter talks about it. Let's just read a little bit about it. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it, the people of old received their commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. Now the writer of Hebrews continues on and he explains how Abel, Abraham and Moses lived by faith. And then he says in verse 29, By faith the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war with foreign armies to fight. Now, as you can see, these are all examples of people in the Old Testament who lived through faith. Even though they could not see the future, they could see God and they trusted Him and they knew everything will be okay. So they acted on that faith. Then verse 12 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Scripture again points to Jesus Christ, the founder and the perfecter of our faith. Faith is not just believing that God is real. Because, tell me, what is the difference then between you and demons? Because they also believe that God is real, that He exists. James 2 verse 19, You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. True faith is believing with everything that you are, mind, body, soul, spirit, everything you believe fully in Jesus Christ, that He died in your place for your sins. A punishment that you should have received, that all went on Jesus Christ. So He died in your place. 
And so you believe in Him. You trust in Him fully for salvation. But not only that, not only do you trust Him for salvation, you also now trust Him after salvation on the road of sanctification. So first, you've been declared as righteous. That was the first step, right? But now there's a lot of steps left until the day that you die. This road is a road of sanctification where you learn to grow spiritually, to be more like Jesus Christ. And on this road, while you're still here on earth, you fully, by faith, through faith, now trust in Jesus Christ that He will help you on this road of sanctification. You trust fully in the Word of God, in His promises. And believe me, you will be tested. Your faith will be tested. James 1 verse 2 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Ask yourself this question. Do you have unshakable faith in Jesus Christ? Do you truly believe Him? Do you trust His Word, His promises? Do you believe that He will help you on this road of sanctification while you're still here on earth? Do you believe it? If you don't, then you don't have the strong shield of faith on you. And you cannot extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Now, let me give you some good news. The good news is that your faith can grow. Young Christians who sometimes doubt, they are called those of little faith. Matthew 8, And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But he was asleep. And they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this, that even winds and sea obey him? Please listen to me today. There has to come a point in your life where you kneel before the mighty throne of God and where you submit to His authority over your life, where you understand that you don't have all the answers, that you are not perfect, and that you cannot control everything. Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 8 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. It doesn't say certain ways or some ways. It says, in all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. You know, as Christians, we sometimes forget what we actually have in Christ. It's like people who, who live near the beach, the ocean, and they see whales and all of these things. It's so beautiful the first few weeks when they are there. But then when they live there for a few years, they get used to it, right? They don't appreciate it as much anymore. But then when someone gets there for the first time and they see the ocean for the first time in their life and they see the beauty of it and wow, breathless. That's how we sometimes forget the value of being a child of God what He has done for us. And we forget that we have received the best of gifts. And the best gift, of course, one of them is faith. Because remember, Jesus Christ is the founder and perfecter of our faith. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13. So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Do you remember in the previous videos, I said it is because of your faith that you have been justified by God. 
Well, it is also because of your faith that you now have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Romans 5 verse 1, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Him, we have also obtained access by faith into His grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, this is part of the reason why we are called the light of the world, the salt of the earth. Because whenever we experience hardships in this temporary world, we don't see it, we don't experience it, we don't go through it the same as unbelievers do. Why? Because we have faith. So we don't focus on the hardships, we focus on Jesus Christ. Our eyes are fixed on Him. We have full trust in Him. Let's read Hebrews 12 verse 1 again. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Our focus is in our final destination, eternal life. We don't focus on the physical, we focus on the spiritual. And that is what sets us apart and what gives us strength to endure. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 17, For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. I hope that you take your relationship with God very seriously. That you grow spiritually to such an extent where you start to rejoice in your suffering, in your hardships. Because you are starting to see the bigger picture of life and God's plan. That you will be able to say like Paul in Romans 5 verse 3, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing, not wondering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Now, in the next video, we're going to talk about the helmet. Do you know what the helmet represents? I'll join me in the next video and you'll find out. And remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And before you go, always remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to you.